infinite complacence, people went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. Strange things happen in the world. People see creatures, encounter entities, and experience the paranormal. Podcasts like Into the Fray document these encounters. Now what if there's a group trained to go head-to-head with these beings and monsters? What if they hide behind the scenes watching and waiting for creatures and the supernatural to enter our world? Who would stop something threatening the safety of individuals or even the entire planet? This is Project Threshold. Their motto, Protect Humanity from Darkness. Written by Craig Crawford comes the release of the fourth Project Threshold book. Something has awakened in Alaska and it's heading south with one goal, one purpose, to cleanse the earth of humanity. Harris Berger, Talise Randall, and Hannah Riker are the only people standing in its way, and if they can't find a way to stop it, humanity is gone. Now available on Amazon, Apple Books, and Barnes & Noble. Search Project Threshold Finale. And you can also discover history on the organization, learn about the team members, and more at projectthreshold.com. So on this edition of Into the Fray, I welcome Debbie back on with me. Now, Debbie has been on for two different parts of what I titled The Elemental Somerset, UK. This one will be set in a little bit different location, but part one was 311, part two was 340, and 340 aired in April of 2022. So really not that long ago. It's it's been a while, and I she's one of my patrons, and she's in... Uh, Discord, if you guys all know what Discord is, it's it's essentially AOL chat room reborn for those of you uh, like me that remember AOL chat rooms. But I don't always get to catch, I was saying before we started, that I don't always catch all of these uh, Discord pops off, right? Like it's busy in there, so I don't get to catch everything that happens. But when I'd pop on, I would see you saying, oh, this or that happened last night or this happened last week. So things have not calmed down for you at all. But before I officially say thank you for coming back on and welcoming you back, thank you for doing this. Let me just let people know what was covered on 311 and 340. It was a lot. Now, there is elementals. There is a mimic situation, glimmer man, predator type being beings, I should say. And black masses, including this shadowy creature in the house, which uh, you kind of teased before we officially started that uh, there's another element to this little guy now, which I can't wait to get to. (laughs) Shadow people, classic ghost activity, the horrifying tall entity, uh, which keeps you from looking out one of your windows at your house. I know about that. Uh, More just random anomalies in the periphery physical interactions, and UFOs. So a lot was already covered. So as I said, I encourage you guys to go back. You know, if you're kind of looking for patterns in all of this, which is what we're all trying to do here, right? Gather the data, look for the patterns. What is this? Is it all the same thing? I would encourage you to go back and maybe you can help us figure that out. We don't know yet and neither does anybody else, but we're trying. But Debbie, welcome back on the show. Hello. Just so much going on for you, and and I know that, as I just said, we're all trying to figure this out, and as you admitted, you're going, I just have even more questions now. 
I do. I, I, you try and think you understand something and then something else will happen and you haven't got a clue. I, I, I just, I just don't understand it apart from we're not in control and they these things can recognize you whether they recognize a, a, a face or an energy or a bloodline or a, anything or all of the above i don't know but they recognize it all the things i'm going to talk about today are things that have happened since September 21 up until October 23 in North Norfolk in the UK, uh, which is coastal. There's a lot of woodland that you can walk through. It's very rural and, you know, it, big sandy beaches, anything. As far as I can tell, there are two elements. One is very much sort of like a fey elemental element, and one is more UFO element, but they could be interchangeable mm -hmm. uh, be because of the the interactions. And there's a little bit of black, big black cat as well. We possibly ran into on one occasion so there's a lot going on and I've been keeping a diary of everything that's been happening for the last few years and it's all just bullet points and I write it down as it happens sort of on my phone and it's about 10,000 words now and so I, I said that before you go there, Debbie, I just wanted to say, and I, I didn't, I don't want to jump back. I said I didn't want to jump back too much, but mm -hmm. I feel that this is important to say because you're a very smart, very measured person. You are, are a nurse and an archaeologist. So I just wanted to throw that yeah. out there to, to folks that have not heard 311 or 340. Yeah, I want to understand. So I will look for an explanation first. I will also go towards something to try and work out what it is first and with definitely with the elemental that came home i think that was my problem because i actually walked towards it because i wanted to see what's going on okay what's that what's going on what is it what isn't it what how can i explain it so i tend to be really rational um in my in my day-to-day -day life, I have to be really, really rational. So, um, you know, that that's my approach. My husband as well. So everybody in the house has seen these things. My husband um, has been with me when we've been to Norfolk and he, and, and on the path in Somerset, and he has witnessed things as well. So there's always, usually, a... Um, somebody else somebody else who can corroborate that oh that happened or yeah i saw that flickering or whatever's happening people have experienced things as well because i could also go okay that's just my imagination or you know i've got a migraine or um just making it up so i'm trying to find rational explanations for what's going on and I can't what would you guys call it it would be the excuse of oh Debbie's gone down down to the pub again right the, the pub <laughs> yeah the pub <laughs> it would be oh mum's off on one again yeah Just leave her alone she's tying <laughs> tying one on I like that expression you're tying one on <laughs> Yeah, just 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 let her ramble off in the corner at some point. Yeah, she'll be done we'll soon. Just let her let her <laughs> let her loose. Let her rip, and then she'll she'll calm down. So yeah. So what is the first bullet point that you want to cover on this edition? So probably the first trip we took back to the woods, where I had the um the sort of mimicky sort of thing that that was calling my friend's name or she thought it was calling my my name back in the 1980s. 
So this was in September 2021. And we went back to the woods. And these are huge. They cover, you know, several hundred acres. And there's paths all the way through the woods. But because I know these woods, and we used to go there often as teenagers and, and student nurses, there are paths that are not used very often by most other people and those tend to be the paths that we use because you go you know you can do three four five miles and go out and do massive long loops so that's what we did and we were just coming back to the point where i had the original um thing that was following us in the undergrowth um, so we were nearly back at the car and it was really, really tipping down with rain. So wet, I had like rain dripping off my nose. You know, you were absolutely wet, soaked through. And that's when I saw, I don't know what you would call it. Would you would call it another elemental or a shapeshifter or... Or was that the original thing that we saw and it recognised me? Um, so just standing off the path, about 10 foot off the path, was a figure. And we made eye contact. So it was standing, looking at us and had sandy hair. It really reminded me of the... the the cartoon that was in the Mad magazine, you know, the, mm -hmm. the yeah, sort of like that sandy hair and freckles. And I thought we were going to get told off because we were on, we weren't on one of the main paths. And I was so wet, I was like, just you know, just try it, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, tell you off. So we made eye contact, and then he turned round and went further back into the woods but as he turned round he morphed into a deer so he sort of went from a standing height and shrunk and grew fur and then was a deer now did your husband see this uh, he was looking in the opposite direction <laughs> Right? Has to be that way, doesn't it? Now, I mean, that said, I mean, that one. he has seen things, so it's not like he's never he has seen, things. seen it. Yeah. And this entity, you have brought this, uh, this guy up before. Now, I don't, and forgive me, because I, I just, I didn't go back and listen to in, in its entirety, both of the, no. uh, I, I remember most of them, but was he ever mm. this quote unquote mad magazine shape or form at any point uh not before i, I seriously thought it was a person oh. and i thought we were going to get told off because we weren't on a uh you know a widely used path and it was the fact that he changed into a deer i don't know whether it, that's an elemental that lives in that part of the woods because in October, right, so what, five, six weeks ago, I saw him again in the woods. I mean, considering what happened in the late 80s or early 90s in that same spot, and also very interesting, right, mm -hmm. that now here we are, almost back to the car park, right where this happened, back in late late 80s, early 90s, whenever that was, you and your friend took opposite of forks to get back to the car park. And at one point, and this is something that at least when I, we last talked about this, she, to this day, it freaks her out so bad. She will not discuss it, but she thought that you had crawled in through the brush or was in the brush somewhere hiding and calling her name. And it really freaked her yeah. out. And by the time you guys met back up around at the car park, she said, why were you doing that? That was really freaky. And you're going, I didn't make a sound. No, no, because something, whatever was in the woods was, was following me, was pacing me. Right. And when I stopped, it stopped. 
And I was getting really freaked out. And so here we are again with now, I mean, what essentially, what, what else would we term this but a shapeshifter? I know that sounds funny to folks, but a, a lot of people have these experiences, right? Uh, I mean, just look at something like a Robert. So it goes into the woods, and I'm sure immediately you're going, well, first it looked like a person, now it's a deer, here we go again. Husband's looking the other way. Did you instantly go, um... Honey, honey, uh, this just happened again. This is going on right now. And you got, were, were you creeped out by that? Or are you kind of at this point I going, was, here we go again? Oh, really? I was extremely creeped out by it. We stopped immediately. As I said, I'll go towards something. And I went towards where it disappeared into the woods. And you couldn't see anything. So this at this point is where the woods go downhill. So you can see for quite a way. I couldn't see a thing. There was nothing that you could see. Uh, and then we just discussed it for the the rest of the time, wondering what on earth it was that we'd seen or not, or i have seen, or is it something that that's similar to the thing that we had at home? Um, had it followed us? Don't know. Absolutely don't know. Here's a a strange question before I forget. You said that it was raining so hard that the rain was, you know, dripping down your nose. And I mean, I'm sure you guys get some serious rainstorms out there. I know it rains a lot. Was this entity, Mm -hmm. especially when he's, you know, about 10 feet away and still looking kind of like a person, was he wet? No. Mm, Okay. That's creepy. Yeah, not at all. Not not wet at all now you say that i can see him in my head now and he wasn't and literally it was so wet one of those you just it's gone through every layer of clothing you're just soaked that that sort of wet the only thing i can put it down to is a sort of an elemental or a shapeshift or something that lives in those woods Mm-hmm. and has lived in those woods for a long time. And I don't know whether, because it was the first time we'd been back for a number of years, whether it was a greeting or a, a, an ICU. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, so when, so September 2021 was this event. When was the last time that you were in that spot? in October about six weeks ago oh no I mean prior to that I'm sorry I didn't I didn't word that properly how long had it been oh no no okay no before then it would be 1996 oh Oh my gosh okay I didn't realize it had been that long so okay that's it was a long time crazy okay that adds another level of just that is so crazy and cool to me because as you say it's like you recognized you and it's like hey there's there's debbie i'm gonna go screw with yeah. her again <laughs> it's just like debbie's yes, back and it almost felt like that it was almost like i see you and i'm like i don't want to see you debbie can you imagine uh, if someone if someone and I'm not trying to fish for if this is private property or I, I know a little bit more than other people, but I'm just putting this out there. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to go any further than this, but can you imagine if someone built something on that spot? What, what would happen inside of that structure? I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. Maybe nothing, but I, I just feel like this, whatever this is, is very timeless and powerful and just feels like, this is my area, and if I if I want to show myself, I will show myself. However, I feel like looking to you, and uh, yes, I will always I will also change if I feel like it. Um, to really just notch yep. up the oh my god, what did I just see? But yeah, I just that runs through my mind. I'm like, can you imagine anything being built on that spot? What would go down? um yeah i think they'd be very disturbed there is one patch of that woods and it always happens not every time so maybe once every 10 times that we've been back to the woods and they've been back to this patch of woods it is only in a 
particular area. That's, wow. And the, there are they are hundreds of acres. Yeah, I was not I was not expecting that right out of the gate. You're like, yep, back at the original spot. Here we go. Um mm -hmm. holy yeah. smokes. Okay, so so that occurs September 2021. Now Obviously, you and your husband are chatting about this. You're like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. This happened after all these years. And obviously, it seems like the same entity can just change at will. So what is the next thing that occurs? I hope you're not going to tell me it's something at the house, but I know that some of that is coming. So, no, so we've been backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards because we, we actually l love it up there and we've got friends up there. And so we we have been going backwards and forwards every few months and this is then we went again in December 21 and the same patch of woods there was an oval of distorted space um it looked like it was foggy in the middle of this oval so you couldn't see the trees behind it the path didn't look normal it took longer than it normally takes to to go that length of that part of the path and we didn't go in or through the misty part of this oval but it just felt wrong and off and we did pick up the pace and move out of there quite quickly. So there's obviously something that goes in and out and on and off in this space. But there's no control over it. I'm thinking of that uh, scene from Poltergeist where the, the mother is running towards the children's bedroom and the hallway just, because there's some real shisa going down and she's trying to get to the kids bedroom in the hallway just stretching out further and further and she's like no it's right there what the hell's going on <laughs> and you've always okay and this is something I, I forgot to mention in the bullet points was this idea of essentially for lack of a better term a portal i don't know what we're going to call that right mm -hmm. it may not be you're not going to try to find out though and walk into the damn thing because this is not the first time that you've you've seen this distortion and in fact the episode images I think I kept its name for 340, mm. is one of these distorted areas. You've taken pictures of this. Yeah, yes. And as we walked past it, we said, that doesn't look normal. But only going forward. And we n neither of us looked back at it until we couldn't look back at it, if that makes sense. So we walked past it and it was an oval and it had sort of like a grey, foggy mist in the middle of it. So you couldn't see the trees properly through it. And it was only when we'd gone round and past it and out of sight of it, did we turn round, even though we were discussing it, and look back to see if we could see anything. And then we had a discussion about, well, why didn't we look back? We were told not to. Mm. And we both said that. We both said because we were told not to. I do wonder what, and I don't want any of you to try this. I'm sure you won't. You don't need me saying this. But I have you ever thought, gosh, I wonder what would happen if we walked into the Oval? <laughs> I don't find out. No, you don't. I, yeah, no. It's, like <laughs> no, I said, I you don't need that. me saying it because you and your husband <laughs> have no desire. And it, it, not only that, but you were, there's this voice, this internal voice saying, don't even look back at it, let alone walk near it. No, no. And we were discussing it. So as, if you're discussing something because you're walking along and it's in your vision, you look at it. Right. Don't you? You know, if you're, it'll be, look at that, or can you see what that is? But we were discussing it, but we weren't looking at it. Because we were told not to. Yeah, I wonder what would have been standing there, or, you know, what, what kind of know. therapy you guys would need, <laughs> and what you would see, right? Like, I, I wonder if that's, 
some kind of an, an internal primal instinct that kicked in, or if it really was something, I don't know, called an, an angel voice or whatever the heck you want to call it, just trying to protect you, mm-hmm. uh, just saying don't turn around. Protect you both, though. That's what's cool about this. It's not like it was just you getting this protection. Your husband was, too. Yeah. Yeah, because I'd be the one who would walk towards it and poke it. Yes, you would. So, but, <laughs> at which you proved in the very first story, you're like, yep, walked in there. I went to the where it disappeared. And, uh, but yeah. in this case, you, there was something just going, nah, don't even, don't even turn around, Debbie. Just keep on, keep on keeping on. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Keep going until you're out of sight of it and then you'll be fine. And mm. then you can turn around. Something yeah, is it, I, really nasty there. And Anne, is that mm-hmm. the same, you know, is that the, the same thing as this red hair, freckly thing that can turn into a deer, but has also looked like other things at other times? Uh, is that is that where he comes from and goes to? Is possibly. it even two separate things? You know, these are the, as you say, these are the questions that we, that just really get into your brain and bore a hole in there and you're going, this is driving me nuts. Yeah, I, I don't understand. I don't know. You could say that is that entity there all the time and just protecting the woods and then things come and go out of it? Is it environmental? But the weather and the time of year and time of day wasn't the same. So I don't know. And also, um, if you take 10 other couples, and this is, there's whole layers to this, because it it also has to do with people that may be a little more sensitive, or people that pay attention to things like this, right? Okay, so there's all that. But stripping away all that, if you take 10 other couples, and you know, you left the woods, and then another couple walked right behind you, they left the woods, out of the, you know, 10 other couples... Would they have the same experience? Would they see the oval and the misty weirdness in the middle and have this feeling like don't turn around? Or would it just be you guys? You know, are you guys chosen for some reason? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know whether it was that initial thing in the woods in the 1980s that marks you out or opens something up. I really don't know or or makes that connection and therefore then you are that I sometimes I almost feel like a pet or a plaything and I don't know whether that's it that you're marked out that oh that yeah we can do things and just really freak you out yeah, and how do you not react to some of this stuff, right? I mean, your reaction is so cool because, and I and I think this is probably why you became an archaeologist. But you're you're just like headlong into finding the answer, so that's what you do. So if something's even a little scary, where other people might be like, Oop, "I'm out of here, peace," you're going, "No, nah, I'm going to go towards that," which is you know really cool. Uh, but there are occasions then, which this just proves it that. There is that self-preservation or whatever outside forces telling you this is not the time to to have that archaeologist <laughs> Debbie come out. <laughs> you're gonna tuck her in yeah. uh, so that you're o- you're okay because whatever that that was was obviously a, a pretty nasty thing. And now this may be an answer to the question, but you know that initial encounter with this mimic situation back in the the nineties or you know late eighties, well, whatever. You did have an outside party, your friend, and she did experience that with you. I wonder if you and your husband, in this occasion, had anyone else with you. You know, would that have even showed itself? You know, there's just so, and these are all just, it's all conjecture, who knows? But that aspect of it is fascinating to me. Like, is it tailored, as you say, Is it, are you marked? Then is it tailored to you each and every time you go out there? It's going to recognize you, and it's going to go, well, what do I feel like? looking like today you know or whatever the the case is yeah you you just don't know is it like um you know seeing those magic eye pictures which i could never see is it something that is in the back of your eye in genetics is it something in the way your brain works is it there's so many questions and it's only questions because i don't 
have any answers. Right. At all. So what was the next thing for you guys? Oh, the, the next thing we have, we have discussed this and <laughs> argued about this in, in a, in for ever since it happened. So there is a main road that goes through these woods and there's another section of woods on the other side of these main roads. So we decided, and this is in June 22, we decided that we would go for a walk in the other side. And, and this is woods and heathland. So it's an ancient, like millions of years old, so it's a it's it's an old cliff that goes down into where there used to be sea millions of years ago so it's really really sandy and woodland on the top of the cliff and so you walk through the woodlands and you climb down and go through the sandy sort of low-lying bit and then climb back up the cliffs and into the woodlands again so we had gone through the woodland and we're walking down the really sandy part to the lowest point and there so it's all heathland so low heather and low growing plants i there was the odd tree just standing up by the path and they were mostly pine trees there were a couple of oaks nothing else apart from those and I was walking along and looking at my feet because I was looking for lizards. We have one poisonous snake in the country, which is an adder, and they frequent places like that. So I was looking for adders. And also sandy soil is really um, a good uh, contrast so that you can see worked flint. And so I was also looking for bits of worked flint and um, shells and things because that's always what I do. I'm always field walking and looking down at my feet and seeing what I can find. It's just something you do as an archaeologist. So I was looking at my feet and walking along and we were hit by a wind and my husband said it was pushing straight at him. I thought it was in a circle, almost like a whirlwind. And this wind started as I walked under the branches of a tree that was in the middle of a path. It was in the middle of the path. He I was still looking at my feet and he said, oh, it must be a gin. And I thought it was funny and looked up and looked up along the length of this really tall pine tree, maybe 40, 60 foot, really tall pine tree, and said, hello, dropped my face back to my feet. I didn't even break stride. And the moment we walked out from under the branches, the wind stopped. Fine, we were just like, that's a little bit weird. Um, carried on, finished the walk and everything. Um, that night, I had a really, really, really lucid dream about, and I don't particularly have lucid dreams, about this tree and it was surrounded by a ring of really bright pulsating light and there were creatures going in and out of this ring of light there was um, a figure in charge of what was going in and out the figure was wearing a cloak sounds really weird was wearing a cloak but he was also the same figure that we had seen sort of just standing on the heathland watching us do this walk. We just thought he was like a random weirdo. And this figure in the dream told me that I, 
it was not my time to go to this light. Okay, really weird dream. Woke up, thought, okay, that's a bit weird. Carried on with what we were doing. That, so then on the, the next day, we'd just been out, nothing else weird had happened. But in the evening, we were outside watching bats and, you know, just having a glass of wine outside in the, in the nice, really warm evening. And I just happened to be looking in the right direction and I saw a light and it was bigger than a planet just go straight up in the air and flick out like a light switch being turned off. It's that that absolutely gave me the heebie jeebies. I don't know why. I, it just like no 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 I don't want to have seen what I've just seen. But it just switched off. How can you have a light going straight up and switching off? And I tried, it wasn't a jet afterburner. I grew up near Lake and Heath and Mildon Hall airfields. I, I know what jet afterburners look like. It wasn't one. Nothing switches out the way this light did. It was a bright white light went straight up in a straight line and flicked out of existence. Now, in regards to this strange winds situation, your husband said it must be a gin. Is that what he said? Yeah, that's what he was laughing. He said, oh, it must be a gin. You're like, don't say that word out loud. Um, No, but uh, (laughs) how dare you? Um, You know what that reminded me of when you started to talk about it? It's not exactly the same but didn't you guys have an experience in Cornwall where there was like this buzzing, like loud buzzing, mm. and then it like flew, like quote unquote, flew up into the trees? Like in, it, it, I mean, that yeah, sounds no. so similar. Uh, no, no, this, this was, this was just surrounding this tree and this tree was huge. And I looked up the length of the trunk. We went back and did the same walk on the 23rd. So we'd had this thing with the the gin on the 20th. We'd seen the bright light in the sky on the 22nd, or I'd seen the bright light in the sky that flicked off on the 22nd. We went back on the 23rd and did exactly the same walk. And the tree had disappeared. It wasn't there anymore. What? I, I can't explain this. I really can't. <laughs> we have these we have these arguments about yeah, but the dream disappeared. It wasn't there because <laughs> my husband didn't see the tree. He saw the wind. He had the wind blowing in his face, and that's it. He didn't see the tree that I walked under and looked up the length of the trunk. And walked out from under the branches. What the actual hell, Debbie? What does that mean, he right? didn't see it. What does that mean? I don't know. How could he, he not didn't see, see it? it? It was huge. This thing was 40, 60 foot high. And when I looked up, I was about a foot away from the trunk. It was, which is why we, we were having this, the tree was here. No, it wasn't. There was no tree. <laughs> Oh, oh my had this God. so many times. I walked under a tree branches. The branches were almost touching my head, and I walked under it, and the wind started as I walked under the branches and stopped as I came out from under the branches. And it was a whirlwind. It was circular. And my husband didn't see the tree, but he just felt the wind pushing him. I've never heard anything like that. It's, I don't understand it. Why was it? So was that the lucid dream, not a lucid dream? 
was there, was I just remotely viewing what was going on at the tree that evening? Was the light connected with it? Was that the tree or whatever it was leaving and disappearing off? I don't know, but they feel like they're all interconnected. We also looked at our Fitbits and there when we walked well when we walked under the tree when the tree was there we both did an extra five to six hundred steps and the walk took 20 minutes longer what oh okay so now we're getting directly into the realm of missing time which is usually just straight if you go straight up nuts and bolts ufo abduction scenarios Right? I know, and I don't want. That. I, I know, I know, right? Like, who wants to even think? Now, okay, here's here's where again, my memory is going to fail me with certain details. Had you ever had missing time before that? No. Oh, Shaisa, no, Debbie. I can think of. No, no. I cannot explain that. And and both of your it. Fitbits matched. Uh, within sort of 15, 20 steps. Oh my good God. Okay. You know, there was, there was, there was the same discrepancy and we did exactly the same walk because we were following a trail. So. Right. Like where you, where you both yeah, would have had to have gone essentially to the same place off trail or backtracked for whatever reason, mm. but you don't recall doing that. No, there was just this wind no. and now there's 20 minutes gone. That's not, and the steps match. And where did the tree well, go? Well, the tree, the tree of tree course, is in the, the middle the of the thing. path. Mm. Cause it, it, it's like, why was a tree in the middle of the path? The tree was in the middle of the path. Well, you know, I might be speaking with Mike Cleland next week and it reminds me okay. uh because you know he's like the owl guy right so that reminds me of the yeah. line that i've said over and over again from the fourth kind it's not an owl well there you go it's not a tree it. debbie it's not a tree but what the hell <laughs> okay holy crap that gave me chills to be honest with you that one is yeah i don't blame you i don't like I don't that i don't like that it. one i don't like the missing time of that one that one is very creepy and Okay, so let's unpack just a couple of things because your husband, it's funny, but it's not funny, I guess. It, he said, must be a gin. Well, Rosemary, yeah. Rosemary Ellen Guiley, who is, I mean, so well-respected, prolific author. One of my favorite books that I own is her Encyclopedia of Ghosts and Spirits. I mean, such a smart person. She is so missed in this community. But, you know, her thinking was that, all of this, every single thing that we are talking about today and talked about and I have ever talked about or covered with anybody has to do with the gin. She thought that they were, it was all the gin. And she could definitely be right. I don't know either way. We don't know. But I just think it's funny that you, your husband blurted out, must be a gin, you know. He could be spot on. Um, and then we have... And he said it. No, go ahead. That's exactly how he said it. It was just like, oh, it must be a gin. But he was just being pushed by a wind. And this wind, yeah. according to him, came out of nowhere. I walked under a tree and it was circular and the tree disappeared. Well, so, and the wind, so his wind was straight on at his back, right? Like essentially put, like, straight on like at move. his face. Oh, at his face. Okay. Straight on at his face. Mm. And there was no, there was no tree. Circular. Circular. Yeah. And there was a tree there. I mean, my husband's a doctor, so. He's rational, and we have had this discussion so many times about there was a tree. Where did the tree go? I don't know where the tree's gone. And he's going, there wasn't a tree. You're Debbie. Come on, there <laughs> was no tree. And you're like, there was a damn tree. There was a tree. There was a tree. I'm not I, because I was looking at my feet. I wasn't thinking about anything apart from looking at the ground. And I was walking. I didn't even break stride as I went under the tree and came out from under the tree. I'm like trying to take that in. I don't even know where to go with that one because then you have this, the extra steps and the time yep. uh, that you yep. don't, an extra 20 minutes tacked on to what the mm. walk should have taken. 
Mm-mm. But past that quote unquote tree that wasn't their tree, did anything else happen yeah. prior to ending that walk? No. Mm. No. We just, we just. <laughs> Besides arguing, all like there was a tree, <laughs> right? It's a tree. That wasn't a tree. It's like. <laughs> He's like, stop talking about if the tree. If you'd been on the same walk. You could have heard us, actually, because we're like, there was a train! There was a train! Now, have you been back there? We have been back there. Yes, the tree is not there. Still not there. And and have, have you been back there since that? Still not been there. back there, and it's still not there. It is still not there. What the hell? Um, we, Yeah, it's not there. That, I, I cannot explain it. I really can't. Just it makes no sense. We need to get you point. like the top of the line GoPros or something, and just every time you set foot in wood, Steppy, you need to be recording. <laughs> recording, and just go. Like have a drone following you. you. I don't know, but something needs to happen here. And then I can prove a point and go. There was a tree. Exactly. You're like, damn it! Look at that. It's a tree right there. It's a tree. It's, yeah, it's always become a sort of, there was a tree. No, there wasn't a tree. You know, when you start bickering. Right. Ah, there wasn't a tree. Oh, sure, Debbie, <laughs> the vanishing tree. Sure, the 60-foot vanishing tree. Okay. I, I can hear it now because that's, I mean, when some, especially a tree that, that big, right? That It just, it demands respect because it's been around a long time. So it's something that, the, yes. <laughs> and out of your periphery, yes. even though, in you know you're an archaeologist and you say you're I... trying to avoid puff adders you're looking at the ground you you know you're not going to bump into the tree because you can see it in your peripheral vision i mean that we can all look at the yeah. ground while we're I walking looked up the entire i i acknowledge going under the branches because like it will almost brush the top of my head or you know when it just touches the top of your hair mm -hmm. so you just get that little feeling um and when he said it must be a gin, I looked up and I looked up directly up the length of this tree. And the trunk of the tree was about a foot to my left. And I could just see branches going up. And I very facetiously said, oh, hello, and dropped my head and carried on walking. And it wasn't there. How can you lose a tree? Well, and I wonder why you said, oh, hello, right? What prompted you to say that? I don't know. So did were you saying that the branch was close to touching you or that you actually did touch the branch with your head? Did you have any physical interaction it, with the tree? I, it, it, it was, it was almost that, you know, when you, just something very lightly brushes the top of your head you don't actually touch it you know if you're ducking under something you just ever so it almost touches sort of like top of your hair mm -hmm. it was like that okay going underneath it so i was aware i was going under the tree and going under the branches and it was a really hot day like absolutely dead still so no wind at all it was baking hot um no wind and that's why it was so funny that this wind came out of nowhere and was just around the tree was the wind uh, cool at all like cooler than it should have been mm, i can't remember it was warm no it was a warm wind okay but it was circular for me, it was like a whirlwind. It was circular because it was circling around the tree. I, I'm sorry to beat this one to death. Everyone's probably like, "I like, how many questions are you going to have about this?" But this one is just extremely unique, and it, it's got so many different elements that that some of your other stories have. But then also, now this layer of the missing time and these extra steps on the mm -hmm. Fitbit are a little disturbing to me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm kind of, I'm sorry to really beat this no, one, but this very, one is unique. They're very disturbing to me because mm -hmm. I don't want to know. I don't blame you. I want to know, 
I don't want to know personally right why we had that but you want to know generally what it was or what it is yeah you're like you can have your 20 minutes just don't tell me what happened in the yeah. 20 minutes okay just don't tell me what happens yes mm. yes and we've been back several times and there is not a tree anywhere on the path on that trail there are no trees in the middle of the trail there's nothing that we could have you know mixed it up with we've gone backwards and forwards so many times trying to find this tree there's no stumps there's no you know nobody's chopped it down it was in the middle of the path so do you, I mean, I, just can't. I mean, and at the time you weren't like looking straight up and looking at the tree thinking, what a big, beautiful tree and how nice that they were respectful and just let it be. They didn't cut it down for the path, right? Like you weren't even, that wasn't even a thought, of course, but no. it doesn't matter because now when you go back, it's not there. What the hell? It's not there. It's not there. What? It's disappeared. That's yucky. I don't it's like my- it. I don't like the 20 minutes and the Fitbit stuff. Sorry. That's yucky. Whatever the hell this is, stop it. Yeah, it makes no sense, does it? I'm sure that you shared that in the Discord. I'm kind of glad that I'm just now (laughs) hearing this because I'm like, I'm kind of blown away by this one. Pun intended, I guess, because of the winds attached to it. Look at all the elements in this one. People, reach out. If you have any of this kinds of shit going on, Please get in touch. Not to, it's not just to come on the show. I've said this a million times. Just to reach out, just to get some of the data points, just to cross pollinate, and I can pass it along to Debbie because holy crap, yeah. that one is it's 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 cool. It's got cool elements to it, and and it makes you go hmm. But then it's got the yucks. It's a little bit of yucks in that one. There is. I do not want to know. Yeah, I understand the not leave me in the dark, but. All right, so I'm afraid to ask now, but what was the next thing? (laughs) Well, you mentioned Mike Cleland. Cleland? Mike Cleland, Uh uh-huh. So this this is now October 22. And we were in Norfolk again. And we were coming back across country. And so it's really, really um, in the middle of the country. So there's little tiny villages and in between them, you've got fields and you've got woodland and the roads are really narrow, they're country roads. So we were coming back from, I can't even remember where we've been, to where we were staying. And again, we were... And my husband was the one who pointed it out. He he was saying, what's going on with that star? And one of the stars seemed to be flashing on and off, sort of growing brighter and getting dimmer and growing brighter and getting dimmer. And we were trying to work out what it was, whether it was a smear on the windscreen, whether it was an atmospheric trick of the light it was dark so and we were trying to you know there's nothing else on the road there was absolutely no other vehicles on the road and we got to a point where we were scaring ourselves because we couldn't work it out what it was and there was in the middle of the road something brown dark in the middle of the road woods on one side narrow country road and a field on the opposite side so we tend to when you're there or when you're um anywhere in rural roads at this time sort of autumn you're looking for deer because they will write your car off if you happen to hit one so we were, weren't going very fast and we saw this thing in the middle of the road. It was about three or four foot and we got within, I would say, five foot of it before we stopped the car. We were going really, really slowly. It didn't move and it didn't move 
and it didn't move and we stopped the car and it was a big owl just stood in the middle of the road not on any kill wasn't injured we were in the car with the headlights on it it didn't blink move do anything for a good minute minute and a half and then it just took off up and over the car i have tried to find out what sort of owl it was the largest owls we've got we've got some um escaped european eagle owls but i don't think they are three or four foot tall and we actually <laughs> said to one another after the owl had gone i really hope it was an owl sorry i was googling uh, as you the second you were starting to mention that too uh okay the great gray owl is the tallest owl and that's in north america sorry hmm. let me i know me i know in there's a giant the cuban owl that is three feet seven okay. inches but that i mean it's called the cuban owl i'm assuming that's just in cuba um cuba. Uh, sorry i'm just trying to find yeah i'm trying to do the same thing you're you're doing what were you gonna say I know there's um, an escaped pair of European eagle owls in the area. Oh. Yeah, and I was trying to find out whether it could have been an eagle owl. But it was sort of dark brown, and I think they're grey. I've been trying to find out if there's any other escaped owls ever since. And I, I, I haven't found anything that would be the size of the owl that was in the middle of the road staring at us blackistons owl f owl fish okay that's a strange name uh so, okay <laughs> hold on let's see can grow up to 72 cent let's go 72 from 72 uh, centimeters, centimeters to feet to feet would be so 2.36 two feet three, yeah yeah that's not uh, i mean i, I guess it could be I mean, where does that one even live let's see <laughs> anyhow so you were trying to also deduce just just very mundane explanation but that is a huge owl period yes okay so you pull up I'm to quite... it and it's not moving uh it didn't it what... didn't move it just stared at us and and your husband saw an owl react. too, right? He didn't see no alien or anything. Yeah, we both, <laughs> okay. no, we both saw an owl. And when we drove off, when it, it finally and it flew off, it, it it went vertically up and over the top of the car. Oh wow! And we both said to one another, "I really hope that wasn't an owl." All right, now you know I'm going to ask this. I'm sure you would have already mentioned this, without letting me stoop to, to math conversions. But did, was there any missing time in, in that incident? Um, I didn't actually look because I didn't really want to. Okay. I don't know. I'm just such a... Sometimes you just think, I don't want to know. Right. Sometimes I just... You know, we have things happen here quite a lot. And I sometimes it gets to the point where you think, I will just shut the door. Right. And I will come back another day. Right. You have to um, for for your your sanity and just to yeah. just to as you say get through the day. You have things that you have to do <laughs> as a human being. Yeah. And okay, so ever since the strange winds incident, now bouts of missing time are now a worry for you. Yes, mm. yes, because it seems to have been another connection made. Right. Um. And I don't know what that connection is, whether it's, it's, it doesn't seem to be the same as these elemental woodland things. It seems to be something else. Well, and the connection We've of had, seeing that strange star dimming and brightening, yeah. and then there's this freaking yeah. huge owl in the middle of the road. So yeah. there's that connection too, because you're, I mean, because technically... It's uh, unidentified, strange. I mean, it could have been a 
I don't know. I don't freaking know. But essentially, let's call it a UFO just for shits and giggles. And then you have yeah. the owl. So. Yeah. Yeah. Within several hundred yards of one another. Right. As we're trying to work out what this owl, what the, the planet star was doing and whether we was, you know, we were trying everything. We were just like, oh, does it change if you change direction? Is it, you know, is it stuff on the windscreen? Is it, let's clean the windscreen? Is it, well, we couldn't work that out. And not only that, but, and I realize that you say that you were driving slowly, but yeah. where is this quote unquote owl's sense of self-preservation? Because you said you got within five feet of the thing. It just seems like it would have flown off sooner. I don't know. I mean, I'm not an owl, yeah. and they're very they're very smart, so maybe he knew what he was doing, but it just seems like you got really close. We did. We got really, really close. It wasn't injured. It wasn't on any kill, so it wasn't protecting food source. It was in the middle of the road. Boy, it just stood there, and it, and it was almost like a Mexican standoff, like, I don't want to get out of the car. Are you going to make me get out of the car? And it just, we, it just stood there and stared at us. Didn't react to the headlights at all. Well, and when it took off and flew, the wingspan must have been quite impressive. Um, I can just remember watching it go vertically up and over the car. I... Yeah, I can't remember the, the wingspan. Okay, so here's here's a good comparison because I I mean everybody knows I I have I have parrots. I love birds. They're one of my favorite creatures on the mm-hmm. planet. If you look up, I looked up a harpy eagle because that's one that I I just have seen so many videos on because I'm fascinated by them. They're they're huge. So they run in uh, measurement generally. Uh, from two feet ten inches to three feet six inches. Now, uh, as I said, they are right. massive, right? So, and then this thing is somewhere around those parameters. And if you just go look up a harpy eagle on a person's arm, <laughs> you could see this the, the size of of what then essentially Debbie is talking about, which would be an incredible sighting. Uh, just sitting there in the middle of the road like, well, screw you, I'm here, and it's your problem now. Like, I'm not moving. Like, what the hell is that? Again, don't know. Could be anything. Could be a completely psycho owl that tries to just scare people. Could be. Could be a just mentally ill owl, just uh, has no (laughs) idea of its mortality and that it shouldn't be sitting in the road. There's a car coming, and no, I'm not going to fly off. Okay. I'm not going to move. Yeah. Um, Screw you. It's, yeah, makes no sense, does it? Yeah, that is funny that I had just mentioned Mike uh, Cleland, which essentially he's, I mean, quote unquote, like the owl guy, right? Everybody knows him as the owl guy. Uh, His his book, The Messengers, is just fascinating. And I know he just came out with a, a fictional work, which is based upon true stuff. Which I'll be covering with him, but how funny that I just brought that up and you're like, speaking of Mike, <laughs> here's a huge owl story. Okay, this is cool. I like the synchronicity already this morning, Debbie, or this evening for you. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it creeps me out quite a bit, actually, the synchronicity sometimes. Yeah. Anyway, he's just like, ooh, okay. Oh. That's why I don't think we're in control at all. I think something else is is entirely in control of all of this, and we're not. Yeah, you're probably not wrong. No, no. So the next thing is another, I would call it UFO, which is why I said I think it is another connection with something else that has been made, or something else has... And I don't understand this, and I don't understand whether it's it's if you make a connection with something, does something else make the connection? Is it like a Venn diagram that if you interact with one thing, you interact with something else? I'm trying to understand it, and I don't. 
but the only thing I can think of is that you're almost like in the center of a Venn diagram and then you get all these little worlds or experiences touching on you and I and I wonder if that's what the quote unquote UFO things are that they're one part or overlapping section so this was the end of June this year so we went and stayed in a cottage in one of the coastal villages called Thornham and it's all the coastal villages along there are just um, like they, they go along a central road and they're, they're all, you know, they've got like fishermen's cottages and all this sort of stuff. So there's loads and loads of holiday lets and it's really sandy beaches. And I sent you a picture of how far away the beach was from where we were staying. But where we were staying, from our bedroom window, we had a direct line of sight of the beach and the sea. So there's about, I would say, a mile and a half of, you know, village and then marsh and creeks. And then you you get to the beach and the sea. But so there was a direct line of sight from the bedroom window. And this was, so I said the 28th, we're in my diary of, of weird happenings, the 28th. I do not like looking out of the bedroom window at night. I won't now. I used to love looking out of our bedroom window um, because we look onto a hillside and we the moon rises over the hill and it's it's often really really nice. But I will not look out of the bedroom window since all of the the, the things happened here because we had. I went into our bedroom one night and there was a figure looking in the bedroom window. There was just a, a shapeless dark mass with two big eyes looking in the bedroom window and I have never looked out of the bedroom window at night ever since. I just won't do it. We were so it this again what happened is completely out of the ordinary for me now because i'm just i never do it i got woken up maybe two three o'clock in the morning and i can remember waking up and a voice in my head said you need to go to the window and look out and I went, got out of bed, went to the window and looked out of the window and I could see, first of all, I thought it was a ship in distress because I could see two lights vinyl going up and down quite rapidly and sort of moving about the sky. They one was green and one was yellow and then they they changed color so they sort of went white and then they went green and then they went red but these two lights were going up and down in the sky and were dancing around one another and then were going into the sea and out of the sea and back round dancing around one another and this probably went on for about 20 minutes that I felt very I, I felt like my 
brain was sort of shunted over to one side, you know, sort of like the fear. And it was fascination. And then at the end of 20 minutes or however long I watched these two lights dance around and in and out and across the horizon and up and down and change colour and speed and everything. A voice in my head then said, you can go back to sleep. You have seen what is required. And I got back and obviously got back in bed and went back to sleep. Tell me what that's about, because I don't know. All right. So this one, because I and I mentioned this in the in the very first in the intro, I said, looking out of windows at night is a Debbie no no. It has been for quite some time because of some shy said that Debbie has seen. So for you to do this, and this is not me trying to diminish it because maybe this means that it it for whatever reason you did need to see it, but in this way, playing devil's advocate, do you think that you actually did get up out of bed, or is this some kind of a dream that was supposed that was trying to tell you something as well? Uh, my husband asked me the next morning why I got out of bed. Oh, never mind. So, okay. So if he knew that you got out of bed, did he did he not awaken uh, until you got into bed? Or did he actually see you standing at the window looking out, which I'm sure that he knows that you don't like to do. Did he see you staring out that uh, window? He didn't see me staring out the window. He woke up when I got back in okay. bed. Okay. I mean, that's such a Debbie no-no. You don't do that. And for it to say, no, hey, no, you need to go, go look. Yeah, you, you freaking hate it. I know that. Um, it's, that's a whole big thing after what occurred at your place. Yeah. So, hmm, what the hell now? When I'm drawing the curtains at night, I will be looking at my feet. I will not. I absolutely, at home, I refuse to look out of the bedroom windows. There are things out there that I don't want to see. Right. And... You know, we've had owl sounds, again, going back to owl sounds, going absolutely mad outside. So our bedroom has a single story extension, just about three feet underneath the windows. And it sounded like the owls were on just outside on this single story pitched roof. Mm. And... When I've looked out before, you can just see black, a real dark, dark, dense night, but you can still hear the owl. And that's another reason why I won't look outside at night. And more owls. Um, yeah. You have seen what is required. And I, don't you love how cryptic... All of this tends yes. to be because you're going great. I've seen what is required. What does that even mean? Because now I just have, uh, as as it always goes, more questions than answers. So you're going. Thanks a lot. What does that mean? I I don't know. Will it make sense at some point? As far as it's it's just about all I can deduce from that. At some point, that will make sense but it hasn't done so far. Right. And it could be something as when I say simple, but probably not, none of this is simple, but as something as quote unquote simple as, you know, the, the colors of the lights and then the, the way that they moved, you know, maybe another experience that you will have, not that I'm hoping you do. Some of these are a little scary to be honest with you. Uh, maybe there's an experience in the future that will tie into this then right at some point is what you're thinking. Yeah. I mean, these things were dancing. They were enjoying themselves and they were going into the water and out of the water. I have looked up the shipping. I have looked up maritime lights. I have looked up, uh, you know, the lights you have on offshore wind turbines nothing matches i have tried to find out what these were 
Yeah, I love that about you. Anytime Absolutely. there's something like this that you can actually dig into and you're you're doing the research, you do it to try to debunk it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because even even if you can debunk something, that's still knowledge. Absolutely. Absolutely. And more people need to do that, by the way, because I think that a lot of times things can probably be you know, explained by something mundane, which in some cases can be yeah, a huge be. relief, <laughs> like a like a tree <laughs> disappearing in the freaking trail. Where did the tree go? <laughs> that one cannot be debunked. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I don't know where that tree went. So, so then you're yeah. staying at this cottage and this occurs. How many more nights mm -hmm. are you staying at this cottage than after this happens? I think we had another three nights. And anything and we had occurred? nothing. We had nothing else okay. for the rest of this day. You slept fine. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I'd slept fine for the nights before. And it was just wake up and it was like an instruction. Wake up, go to the window and look out. And then you have seen what is required. Go back to sleep. But in the morning, I mean, once you're like fully awake and you realize what had happened the night before, didn't you go, holy crap, I looked out a window at night. And you're phobic about that. Didn't, I mean, didn't that yeah. then kind of go in your go in your mind going, oh my God, I, I can't believe that I did that. Yeah. That, that, yes. It, it's, it is akin to me picking up a spider. I hate spiders. Amen. Like getting even near a spider. Getting within 10 foot of a spider, 20 foot of a spider. <laughs> 30 feet for me. Yeah. Right. Like you, like yeah, we could keep yeah. adding, adding. Yeah. yeah. I'm the same way. <laughs> yes, like, how do you, I, yeah. It's a spider. No. Yeah. It's, I go into full like, squeal I'm mode. Like yeah. Yeah. So, so that's I a huge broken. deal. Yes. It, a, a big deal. A huge deal. I'd never, ever do it. And it was, that's why I'm sort of like, my mind was slightly divorced. So it was almost like it was shunted off to one side and mm -hmm. it was like. So that you could execute that. You just that. do over there. Yeah. And you, you need to keep calm over here and it will be okay, but you've got to do this. I do wonder and, though, if that occurred uh, at your home where that window mm -hmm. is, I mean, that, that freaking window is where that thing was. You know, I wonder mm -hmm. if your mind, as you say, uh, I like the, the verbiage, divorce itself from that trauma enough then if this this voice, whatever the hell this is, comes back and says, Debbie, go to the window. You know what I mean? Like, would that overpower being at that window enough, you know, instead of being in this random cottage that you've never, you know, been in, you're there on holiday. Yeah. I wonder if it would if that would ever happen, I hope not. I don't know that that would, or maybe, I don't know, or maybe that would be, maybe it's trying to help you through the trauma somehow of this window thing. I don't, I don't know. know. Or whether it's picking the point where you are asleep so you won't put up a resistance. I just, it's, I don't know. It's just so many, you know, again, just layering the questions upon the, it's just a, a, a a mountain of, of of questions, and this you, you have seen what is required. What the hell? What do you what? I, yeah. And that language is is weird, isn't it? It's very required. weird. What do you mean required? Required by who? It's very just and institutional. I able, yeah, I haven't been able to answer that yet. And I say yet because I it, it it an answer might. You may not want to get to that course, point. I, uh, <laughs> do I? No. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, no, I don't. Maybe we don't want to get to that point of having the answers because that's <laughs> yeah. uh, something yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 you know, that's something I know that you've, you've heard me ask and most other people ask on the podcast, you know, when they're talking to, let's just go nuts and bolts, uh, UFO missing time. You, you know, you'd ask the, 
tried and true question. Well, I know you don't remember the 20 minutes, but would you like to under hypnosis? And he's kind of going, hell no, I don't want to. Most people go, no, I'm good. Uh Uh-uh. No, thanks. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm really good. I don't want to know what happened with the tree uh, underneath the tree. Those those 20 minutes, thank you. I'm, I'm... But Debbie, what if you actually weren't standing? I, I mean, this is going like way deep. Let's let's go down this rabbit hole for a second, okay? Now I know that your husband mm-hmm. didn't see you standing at the window. You didn't actually wake him up enough to where he realized you were even out of bed until you got back into bed. But what if you weren't even standing at the window? Well, I mean, oh, who knows? No. Who knows where you would be? You know, I'm not trying to make it like this. You know, huge, like you floated through a wall into a ship or anything. I don't know. I mean. But I'm just saying, I know that there's this this whole scenario where you got up and you went to the window, and that's what it told you to do. But I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just I do wonder if your husband woke up during that time, and and you were just like standing next to the bed, or so like it's this creepy Blair Witch situation where you're just like standing in the corner. I don't yeah. I don't know. I'm just it, it's a rabbit hole. I'm just it's all conjecture. We don't we don't know. But it, it's creepy enough that you stood at yeah. the window. Believe me, I just my mind's kind of wandering. You know. Yeah, I can I can I can remember feeling the wooden windowsill. Mm, okay, I had both of my hands on the wooden windowsill. I can remember that, but feeling very the conscious mind was very much you are over there and you 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 you're it was almost like I was an an observer of what was going on does that make sense it does I just I guess of the what the reason I went down that rabbit hole is I know you and I I know what a big deal it was for you to go to a window at night and look out you know so I'm kind of <laughs> like I was like oh my god Debbie you went to a window at night what the heck yeah it's it's, it's not me not me at all and I I don't want to know what's um out there there's you know we have weird sounds going on here and uh, like last week there was a pitch black it was pouring with rain and it had been dark maybe two hours and there was a sound of a crow cawing just outside the glass so so much so that if you you know you pulled the curtain back there would have been a crow looking at you, but there was nothing. You oh, so I, you, I, you did you check, did. and there was nothing there. There was nothing there mm. I was, it was downstairs, not upstairs. Right, right, right. But it was directly below, directly below the that bedroom, window. and I did just. Uh, mm. There are yes, at home there are two windows. There's one upstairs and one downstairs. Um that seem to attract the most of the activity. And it was the, the one downstairs. And I should have known, I should have known better than to look. <laughs> but, but you're like, no, I'll prove this wrong. So what was the next thing after right. after the cottage? Okay, final, final thing in October. So we went back in October. And that's when I emailed you because I emailed you or messaged you fairly quickly afterwards because I think I know what we did wrong this time. So we went back to the woods. I was walking. To, so we got there quite late, and so it's halfway around the trail, and this is about a three and a half mile trail it was starting to get dark dusk so it was starting to the light was starting to go so there was no one no one at all we didn't see anybody else for the entire walk we were in the same patch of woods where all the things happen and i saw the shape shifter deer man thing look out from behind a tree at us and then there was some other little 
creatures looking you know almost coming you could see movement but you couldn't make out exactly what they were so they were just off the side of the path and it almost felt like you were being um, escorted out of their patch of the woods so we were both feeling really uncomfortable and really like things are closing down and we're in the wrong place at the wrong time and do we really want to be here so we were walking faster and faster and we got to the edge of this weird patch my husband said he needed a wee and so he went and had a wee in the woods just off the edge of this patch i was you thinking you have done the wrong thing because as he was having a wee and i was hopping from foot to foot going will you please get out hurry up please 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 hurry up please hurry up we could hear uh, uh, a sound at the start of where this weird patch of the woods is of something coming through the undergrowth and it was getting bigger and getting louder and getting more angry and there was it was almost like it was a real ah get out get out get out it chased us out of this patch of the woods we ran up the hill and i sent you a picture of we were down at the bottom of that hill and we ran up the hill and it was only when we got to the top of the hill and we were out of their patch of the woods that we felt safe it was totally insulted that my husband had a wee on on their patch of woods i think so you guys actually physically ran out of there this time Is it physically ran there were branches being moved but you couldn't see anything there was a feeling of total menace and dread we both felt this we both felt as though we were in danger we both couldn't see anything apart from the movement of the trees and the bushes and the branches and whatever it was this force coming closer and closer and closer and we both just ran up the hill and to a more normal patch of woods i guess and at least in that area there are some still normal areas that you feel you you can go to for a reprieve still, yeah they um they were there are definitely patches that are unusual and it's a it's a small patch that has this thing these things happen most of it 95 percent of it is fine and it this feeling the, this sort of uh, same feeling but it wasn't it was it was something running towards us something moving branches out of the way working trees out of the way kicking up leaves but you couldn't see it and there was an utter feeling of menace and i know it was because well i think i know it was because that my husband had a wee on their patch and i made him go back the next day and apologize <laughs> What did, now, what did he say? Did he agree, though? I mean, considering what he's already seen, he's like, you know what? I probably should do that. I probably should. Yeah, mm. I probably should have waited for a bit longer before I had a wee. You know, when I was, until I was well out of the um, patch of the woods. But yes, that. So they're protective. They're protective of their patch of the woods. Is what I get from that. I think I've got the picture pulled up. I was pulling it up uh, on my emails while you were chatting. And, you know, the yeah. the um, 
you know, this viewing window, as you called it, uh, in the caption is, is very apt. But this is one of those pictures that, you know, if you posted it online, there'd be a million red circles about faces and, and this and that because, of, you know, shadows and leaves and things. But the fact is mm-hmm. that in this area, this specific area, a lot of stuff goes down. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was almost though we were walking through and because it was getting to dusk, we were intruding anyway. And it was almost like, why are you here? This is not your space or time. Normally there aren't people around at that time. And we just happened to be there. Um, I don't know whether the atmospheric weather conditions, it was it was fairly warm for October. There wasn't a lot of rain or dampness in the air. Um, I just think they were really insulted. They had a wee. <laughs> Go figure, like a good way to piss Bigfoot off or elementals is to take a piss in their area. Yeah, exactly. I I, I know. That's why I made him go back and apologize the next day. No, that was a good move, I think, at least to try to amend amend the fences there. Yeah, and just say, I'm very sorry I didn't realize what I was doing, but it's, it's, it was, a feeling of it switched and it switched really quickly of you shouldn't be here you need to finish your walk and get out to oh i'm really you know i'm really annoyed and angry and i'm going to chase you out of the woods because it could have we were still about three quarters of a mile from the car so it could have chased us the entire way through the woods but it wanted to chase far enough that we were out of its patch. Have you guys ever been there at night, like well after dark? Uh, no. <laughs> Would I? <laughs> Not entirely sure. No. Yeah. I probably wouldn't. Probably a good idea not to do that. If they're pissed at dusk, imagine yeah. them, uh, <laughs> at dark, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could deal with any more missing time because yeah you'd probably come back a hundred years later or something like that i don't know debbie here's a question that uh Mm -hmm. people might might ask out there they'll they'll go well if you're having these experiences and and not all of them are are horrifying and terrifying out there and let's just talk about this patch of woods right they're not all because at, at some points you were actually going into the woods to follow whatever it was that you saw because you have this need to know. I understand that. But yeah. why do you think that you keep wanting, is there a, to go back there essentially, like, is there a draw for you? You know, is there a pull for you guys to go out to this specific area in, in these woods? There is a definite pull. And it feels like we belong there. And I think that's also what we, I think it's, it, that goes into how you almost become these things property. That you, you, you almost form an attachment so like i was saying with that the house elf we have i'm you know i'm we've we've all watched it walk across the the room and disappear but nobody particularly freaks out anymore it's just sort of like oh yeah that's the house elf nice to see that it's still here now the and house feel- elf just really quickly the house elf before we go on to what i know we're going to be covering the house elf we talked about pretty extensively on 311. And will you just, the, the house elf is something that showed up after, you know, one of your visits to the woods, right? And you think it's something that you brought mm-hmm. home with you. And everybody sees this little homie. He's he's very active. Um, will you describe, yeah. 
you know, it, it's it's usual MO and what it at least normally looks like before you go on to what I know that we're going to talk about. So it normally looks like a little black cat without a tail and slightly smaller ears than a cat has. So it just looks like a little black cat. And we see it walking and we see it sitting. It quite likes to sit on top of the fridge freezer and look over the top at you. Um, it's, and in fact, actually, on when, <laughs> the, when we were staying where we had the tree disappear, we'd actually taken it away with us because in that cottage where we were staying, um, I, we were having breakfast and I glanced over at the chair next to me and the house elf was sat on the chair. So it's a ta it appears to be attached to the family, not the house. So it's attached to us, not, not the house. And this house elf, like when you mentioned it sitting atop the refrigerator, this is something that for the most part is it's an in the peripheral type of a situation. Like, you know that it's there. You can see it moving in your periphery, but the second you turn to look at it straight on, you can't stare at it or, or anything for a long time, right? Uh, no, you can stare at it. You can look directly at it. And as your brain's going, that's not our cat. It, and you blink and you open your eyes again. It's not there. Or if it's walking and it walks across a room, you can watch it walk for three, four, five steps and then it just fades out of existence. All right, I Samsonited that one. I was off on that one. I, for some reason, I thought that was the whole peripheral thing, but that's other things because you've seen shadow figures and things too. Yes. Yeah. And I'm yes. going to put this in the show notes along with, the photos that you sent along, but uh, I'm going to, Brett Manning of Brett Manning Art, I encourage everyone to go over to her Instagram page. After she heard 311, she did her rendition of the house elf for you. And it, you know, it's, it's pretty dang good. Um, looks kind of like a cat with no, yeah. without a tail and smaller ears and uh, big old eyes. You, you mentioned before we began that you got a couple of kitty cats and yeah. the house elf has seemed to, I, well, are we going to call it take a liking to, or are we going to call it just, I don't know, you know, does it like it? Does it not like them? I don't know. But describe what has gone I on think, lately with the house elf. So um, we have adopted two tabby orphaned kittens. So they came in the house about, about six weeks ago, uh, aged about 10 weeks. So quite small tabby kittens. And the house elf appeared for the first two or three weeks, really, really fascinated with these small additions to the house and these little creatures. And if anybody knows kittens or puppies or whatever they get everywhere and they go everywhere and they because they were siblings they follow one another so they we, everybody in the house has seen a kid you know because they just race in front of you or they walk in front of you has counted one two three oh we've got three tabby kittens the house elf morphed into or appeared to be a tabby kitten for about two or three weeks and was really following the two kittens very very closely and I think it was just fascinated or just wanted to see what they were like. It's gone back in the last week or ten days to be in this small black creature again. I found it fascinating. So we, we've all said, yeah, we've got three. 
why have we got three? We do, you can, and you could count them. You could go one, two, three. And this is again, everybody in the house is seeing three tabby cats. Yeah. 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 And everybody in the house has seen the house up as a little black cat. Right. Very just black, black, black. Yeah. And now you've got tabby cats, of course, have stripes on them. So now you have three yeah. striped little kitty cats. Oh, yeah. okay. Now here's, uh, you, uh, considering how fast sometimes I know that it can move, it can be tough. But with 10-week-old kittens, they're they're quite small. It was the the third uh, extra tabby the size of those or was did he stay the same size he just had now different coloring no he was the same size as the kid wow that is cool yeah i find that absolutely fascinating and it was always the third one it was the one following the other two which is why i think it was really fascinated by these two little kittens and was following them around and you almost feel like it changed into or appeared to be a tabby kitten so it wouldn't frighten them or it wanted to blend in so so it could get close did the two real kittens react or interact with it in any way they have they've done, no they they didn't interact when it was following them they've done the same things that the other cats have done in the house where it, they wake up from dead sleep and look at something that you can't see right and watch something either walk across a room or go down the stairs and that creeps me out because i can never see what they're looking at right right it's like cool. Yeah, I think cats act as incredible barometers. But how cool is it that whatever that thing is? And I, I mean, I guess you brought an elemental home. I don't know. Uh, is an elemental then mm. uh, all of the shapeshifters that people are, are experiencing? Who knows? But uh, I, I mean, at least it's not trying to turn into. Um, I don't know. Pick a pick a, a dog that's a cliche like a pit bull. You know, to terrify yeah. the cats, right? It, it as you say, it turned into one of them to maybe put them more at ease. It, it, it seemed absolutely fascinated by them. It followed them around for a couple of weeks, uh, you know, really closely. So, so they, they, you know, they would almost be touching the tail. It would almost be touching the tail of the of the cat the kitten that was at the back i mean the vibe of the how the quote-unquote house elf because we for lack of a better term that's what we call it the vibe of mm. the house elf is night and day from at least some of what is going on out in the woods yes yes it, i would still say it was an elemental but i think it is quite happy here and is quite protective and it was just just fascinated um some things we've had happen in the woods i do not want to repeat um i don't particularly want to repeat having to stop in the middle of a dark country road with an owl in front of the car i don't want to be chased out of the woods again by something that there was power behind this but it was power to chase you out and i could cause both of you harm but then it that's almost like a you know like a bluff charge or something like a gorilla i'm just thinking mm -hmm. this, just thinking on my feet it's like a that's almost like a bluff charge that was the get you out get you out of their space well especially when you got the sense that it was physically growing in size and shape, shape whatever it was, right? Like you, you got that sense. That's why imagining you and your husband running out of that place. I mean, you, you've never <laughs> done that before. Nope. No, not at all. 
What about the tall entity? Have you seen that horrifying thing again at all? The tall entity. Um, I was going to say which one. That's true. Okay, the one, uh, the one that when your neighbor was, he was like em- either emptying stuff out of the bed of his truck or into the truck or something. That one. And it would then it was oh, like that one, yeah. And it was as tall. That one that was very creepy. I encourage everyone to go listen to that entire encounter. Have you seen him at all? Yes, that we had a couple of weeks of running with him after we had the the question and answer we did. Mm-hmm. Um. So after there was the question and answer. It was in our bedroom uh, for a couple of nights. I, that is not nice. That that entity is means harm. And I don't know whether it was reacting to the fact that we were talking about it and we were sharing experiences as a, a, a group but it was in the corner of the bedroom for two or three nights. It kept us awake. It was really menacing. We, I, we cleansed everything. We, you know, we said prayers. We just, you know, get rid of that thing. It needs to get out of the house. Yeah, it was just standing in the corner. It was, it was in the corner of the room by, um, by the window, <laughs> that window. Of course, should right? So we brick up that window. You think you might need to. <laughs> <laughs> so that window. That damn window. Um, so it was just standing there. It was almost as though if I didn't, I had to fight back against it. I actually physically had bruises on my arms when I woke up one night, uh, one morning. I don't want to read that again. Mm. Was it in the... In the shape of like, you know, how the, the cliche, like someone grabbing your arm really hard, you know, was it in a shape of anything? Yeah, it was like that. So two nights in a row, he's there. And then you guys are doing, yeah. you know, this kind of sp- spiritual warfare, for lack of a better term. That's what you were yeah. doing. You were trying to kick some ass. So then it it did, in fact, it, it abated, it left. Yes. And it has not been yes. back. No, no. You're like, hasn't. until now, because you're making me talk about until it. Until now. <laughs> you're like, thanks, Shannon. But honestly, after that Patreon <laughs> live chat that we did with all of us, like mm. everybody had stuff kick up. And then I had, I still have guilt over that because so much oh. shit got kicked up after we had that round table. And I just, as you say, we, yeah. there was just so many it was all the ladies on and, and all because you guys have all these similar experiences and that's why I put that round table together. And then it was just this meeting of the minds and all these powerful ladies that are, you guys are all incredible. It was, it was like we put something out in the ether and the ether's like, okay, you want to put a spotlight on me? I'm going to put a spotlight right back on you guys. And I know you've already had experiences, but here's some more for you. And I'm like, Oh my God. Like, like, you know, I'm hearing from Shanna, I'm hearing from you, Heather was saying some stuff was going down, I'm like, oh, good God, what have I done? So, I was not, I, yeah, I for, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure that you mentioned the, the bruise, I forgot about the bruises, and did your husband have any uh, physical marks from those couple of nights? Was it interacting with him at all? He just felt absolute menace, mm-hmm. and didn't feel happy and pointed to the corner of the room where it was and I said yes it's over it's 
sorted out. That thing but is such an a-hole. It is because it's trying to silence. Right. But what? I'm sorry. And I interrupted you. You go ahead. No, I won't be silenced. <laughs> so it picked on the wrong person because it's just like, no, actually. You yeah. told me. Big F you, buddy. Yeah. Yes. And I think it... I think everything kicked off after that because knowledge is power, isn't it? And, and, and actually interacting and going, oh, I've had that and I've had that and oh, what is this? That's, that's, that's power, that's understanding and that's starting to be an understanding. Yeah. And it didn't like it. Uh, see, I know I'm going to worry again because we're talking about this and I mean, your home is active anyway. Right. I mean, yeah. it just is. Uh, mm -hmm. But most of it, you just kind of just used to it. But who would get used to that tall drink of POS in the corner and then leaving bruises on you? You don't get used to that. And you don't want we don't want that in any way, shape or form. Yeah. I mean, are, are you feeling like. I'm not trying to be melodramatic, but are you feeling like after we, you know, get off the call this evening, maybe just do like a precursory like fu cleansing just to i don't know we've got to the point where we tend to cleanse the house every week or 10 days or something okay you know just to keep everything out yeah and this this house is our home and you want to be relaxed in your home and there is only so many jump scares I can have in my home before I just go enough you know yeah out please yeah it's all fun and, and games can... until the the a-hole comes back and stands in the corner um yeah yeah and you know you can have them while you're out you can have them while you're at work but when your home is your home isn't it and you want to feel safe and relaxed at home. So we tend to keep it, it cleansed. If anybody sees anything or feels anything, then we'll do a double. You know, we'll absolutely, we always start in one corner and work our way down to the front door and out of the door. And, and um, they can stay out. This probably sounds like a uh, like it would be a selfish thing, but at least this is how I would feel. I always try to you know put myself in somebody else's shoes, and at least in so many of these cases, you have someone mm -hmm. else that is experiencing. I mean, at least some part of of this paranormal activity. That, you know, this is a huge blanket term, but you know, like the the tree. He did experience something. He didn't see the tree, but he experienced this, you know, different kind of wind. And you, at least your husband, then in regards to this, the tall POS, is had also seen him. He was also seeing him on those two nights. So at least you have that, you know. And I, and again, that's why I say it's kind of a selfish. It would be like a selfish thing. Like at least someone else is being terrorized with me. But I mean, that's how I would feel about it because then I'd be like, well, did I? Because in your mind, you're just. You would want to try to explain that rationally. Well, did I see that? Well, was I sleeping? Well, no, because there's bruises on my arm. And no, because my husband yeah. saw it too, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, you, you try and explain things rationally first. I was asleep, um, you know, sleep paralysis. I was having a nightmare. It was the weather. It was, you know, all you. that's what you try and do. And then you look at anything that, you can't explain right and and you know, we've all seen the house elf we've all seen the person that walks up the driveway we've uh, you know we've all seen heard things jump off beds or window seals upstairs when there's nobody in the house we've all had that we've all had footsteps outside we've all had you know things rushing that you can't see at us in the in the garden or outside so we've all had that you know there's that saying where oh you look into the abyss and the abyss looks back and all of that but that's not true in every case 
You know, uh, I don't have stuff going on n- near like, I mean, one percentile of like all the ladies that I just mentioned. And the reason I say that is because you didn't go looking for anything. All you did was go on a damn walk in some dang woods with your friend. And then as you say, all of a sudden there was something about you that it liked or, or didn't like. Maybe yeah. we could go the other way, right? That it, then you are marked. You use the word marked or like you were a plaything. And now all of a sudden from then on, it's just, you've got, I mean, look, you've, you've got a diary of this stuff and we've done three episodes and I already know at some point in the very near future, we can do a fourth. I know that because these things yeah. just, they do seem timeless. They do seem, I mean, obviously they're very, they're very powerful. They're nothing that we can even begin to understand. The house elf itself is not something terrifying or scary, but it has, it's very powerful. It can change its shape and form and thankfully it is at least for now knock on every piece of wood I got around me it it's not a malicious entity if you obey the rules yeah so 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 I have in the house um I have a work room with, with stuff in and a couple of times we have been I don't know whether we've been disrespectful or we've done something that it hasn't liked and the entire workroom has had it looks like it's been had a burglar in you know chairs turned over drawers pulled out stuff emptied out then you say, oh, I'm very sorry if I, if I upset you. It, it, it changed, you know, everything's fine again. Um, but we've had that happen a couple of times. And yeah. you feel that that's the house yeah. elf doing that? Well, it's either the house elf or it's some thing that's attached or in the house. So... Parts of this house were about 300 years old and my workroom is in in one of the old parts of the house. So I don't know whether it's something that's, that's attached to the house. Um, we just had new neighbours and new neighbours move in about 10 days ago and that the room was was a complete mess when the neighbors were moving in and out Mm. and that joins their house so i don't know whether it's something attached to the house that is now just going ah i don't like this well and i can't remember which episode it was but we put together that there's actually there's moving water uh, uh, to some extent underneath there as well right yeah there's a spring line that comes down off the hill at the back of the house and runs underneath the house. Yeah, so there's a so, lot of uh, elements to this elemental thing, <laughs> right? Right in your in your place. And isn't that interesting that there's a change going on? There's new neighbors moving in, and it got pissed off. It did. It did. Could have gone and messed up their house. I mean, they're moving in; they may not have noticed. Yeah, but right. well, you're like, why? Why? Why you got to hit my room? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, why come through the wall? Why, why, what did I do? (laughs) Three, over 300 years old, some parts of the house. That's fascinating. The things that 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 um, house has seen, you know? uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's, I sometimes, you can see a figure. So we've got blocked off doors and it follows a, a line where a doorway would have been a, like a white figure that goes across. And I don't know whether that one was the one that was upset about new neighbors or upset that I'd done something or not done something and just decided to wreck the room. But we've had that happen. See, we're going off of what Rosemary thought and then what your husband blurted out 
you know, about the gin. I mean, if it's gin, it's all the same thing anyway. Just, it's so powerful. It just takes whatever form it just damn well pleases. Yeah. And time doesn't mean anything, I think, to these. Right. So they're not, you know, it's not the 12th of December, 23 to them. It's, you know, I don't think it means anything to them. Yeah. And that's why there, there'll be accounts of, as I think you even said the word bloodlines at some point during our chat early on. That's why these things will just follow down entire families. Like it's like, it's nothing. It's a blink of an eye for them. They, you know, 80, 90, 200 years. Doesn't matter. They got all the time in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And it means absolutely nothing. Um, Which is why as far as I can work out, which is why they can switch in and out or flip in and out of, of our world or reality or time because it doesn't mean anything to them it could be nicer sometimes though you know they they could they know damn well what they're doing uh to grab your arm i'm assuming it was your forearm was it your forearm that was bruised up yeah it was my forearm yeah yeah it knows that's not right it it knows that isn't cool to do uh, it gets a kick out of feeding on, you know, the feed, they, so you've heard a thousand, feeds off the fear, right? Fear. But how the hell are you not supposed to be, uh, how can you, you know what I mean? You can't just elevate your mind enough to not have that primal instinct to not be scared. You're supposed to, by all means, be scared. So, well, Debbie, thanks for coming back on for the update. I, I didn't know. You are all of this, You're welcome. I know that I missed, as I said, I, and I apologize, but uh, honestly, I'm kind of glad I missed some of this in the Discord, because it was a shock, very shocking to me, some of this stuff, because uh, it, it'll give me a lot to think about today, uh, and I know that you will, I mean, we're in contact a lot because of the, the Discord and things, but um, let me know if anything goes down. <laughs> I hope I it doesn't. But I know that you guys are like spiritual gangsters, so you will just kick some ass if you need to. Um, but yes. no, th- thank you so much for coming back on with this update. And I, I, I mean, unfortunately, hey guys, for in in ITF land, the the patrons uh, and I, we all we keep in pretty close contact. That Discord room just pops off. Plus, we have live chats that we catch up on, so patrons are gonna know before anybody else, obviously. Uh, if anything goes down with Debbie, but hopefully, hopefully it just stays with I that cute like. little house elf just wanting to look like other cute little things. That's nice. We'll, we'll, we'll say we're going to camp on that. Um, but yeah, thank yeah. you so much, Debbie. Uh, thank you for thank coming you. on after a long day of, of working. Thank you for letting me just blurt out what's been going on and seeing if anybody has, any idea because i don't yeah and as i i I mentioned after the vanishing tree story because that one is so unique please reach out to me shannon at into the fray radio.com or of course if you prefer you know get on facebook twitter instagram whatever but if you it's not about coming on the show just if you want to reach out and say okay well here's what has happened to me and it's very because i know you're out there I know what Debbie said has poked and prodded something that's happened to you and you went, holy shit, I've never heard anybody say that. Please, please get in touch with me so I can at least pass that on to Debbie because it it does feel good, right? When there's somebody else out there that has had similar experiences. That's what this is all about. It's the entire freaking reason that I do this show. So, uh, yeah. Um, Debbie, I know that uh, we will talk soon. But, of course, you are welcome mm-hmm. back for part four. I'm hoping that it's all more light and love stuff. I don't like hearing the bruises and all of that. <laughs> maybe, maybe we could do that, that for part four. But, uh, of course, you're welcome back uh, anytime. But have a good night out there. <laughs>